Hello, and welcome to Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight are Dan Afshar, a company director whose specialist subject is the London 2012 Olympic Games, George Williams, a student who will be answering questions on J.S. Haldane, Sancho Lake, a financial advisor whose subject is Hancock's Half Hour, and Anne McElhinney, a retired primary school teacher whose specialist subject is the John Wyndham novels. <laughs> Four contenders, each determined to do their best to get through to the semi-finals. And the pressure is real, of course. Just two minutes to rattle through their specialist subject, two and a half minutes on the subject they haven't been able to swat up on general knowledge. They don't know what's coming, of course. One of them may eventually walk away with the famous glass bowl and the mastermind title, but that's a way off. Let us ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Uh, Dan Afshaw. Your occupation? Company director. And your chosen subject? The London 2012 Olympic Games. When more than 10,000 athletes from 204 countries came to London. Here we go. The opening ceremony of the Games was directed by Danny Boyle and featured Kenneth Branagh reading a speech from Shakespeare's The Tempest. The ceremony was known by what title? Isles of Wonder. Yep. The first gold medal of the Games was won by China's Yi Siling in the women's 10-metre air rifle. That event was held at which venue? The Royal Artillery Barracks. Correct. For the third consecutive Games, Michael Phelps won gold in the 100 metres butterfly and 200 metres individual medley, but failed to do the same in the 200 metres butterfly. Which South African swimmer beat him in the final of that event? Chadler Kloss. Yep. Which Pritzker prize-winning architect designed the Aquatic Centre in the Olympic Park in East London? It's said to have been inspired by the fluid geometry of water in motion. Zaha Hadid. Yep. At the age of 38, Ryan Giggs became the oldest goal scorer in men's Olympic football history when he scored for Great Britain in a 3-1 victory against which country? Uh, Canada. United Arab Emirates. Britain's Charlotte Dujardin have won gold medals in both the individual and team dressage events on which horse? Vallegro. Yeah. Britain won 29 gold medals, which was their most since the first London Olympics in 1908. The last of those 29 golds was won by the boxer Anthony Joshua in which weight category? Super heavyweight. Yep. The British cyclists Bradley Wiggins and Chris Froome won gold and bronze, respectively, in the men's road time trial. Which German cyclist took silver in that Tony, event? Tony Martin. Correct. The United States qualified for the final of the men's 4x400 metres relay and eventually won silver, even though their first leg runner broke his left fibula midway through his lap in the heats. What's his name? Uh, Miller. Mitchell, in the archery events held at Lord's Cricket Ground, the women's team competition was won for the seventh successive time by which country? South Korea. Yep. The German athlete Robert Harting celebrated victory by ripping off his vest and jumping over the barriers that were in position for the women's 100-metre hurdles final. In which field event had he just won the gold medal? Discus. Yep. Kim Gavin, the artistic director of the closing ceremony, said his aim was to celebrate the Games with a mashed-up symphony of British music. The final performance, after the Olympic flame had been extinguished, was by which veteran rock band? The Who. The Who is correct. Dan, you have no passes. You have scored ten points. <laughs> and our next contender, please. And your name is? George Williams. Your occupation? Student. And your chosen subject? J.S. Haldane. A Scottish physiologist who made important discoveries about the interaction of gases with the human body. Here we go, two minutes. John Scott Haldane was born in Edinburgh in 1860. What was the name of the family estate near Glen Eagles where the young Haldane spent his summers? Clone. Yep. At Edinburgh Medical School, Haldane studied under a physiologist who became an inspiration for the character Professor Challenger, created by Arthur Conan Doyle. Who was the physiologist? William Rutherford. Yes. Haldane discovered that many deaths in mining disasters were caused by carbon monoxide rather than explosions. He developed emergency breathing apparatus and introduced an early warning system which used either canaries or which other animals? Mice. Yep. In 1895, Haldane was asked to investigate five deaths at the East Ham sewage works. He identified that they'd been caused by putrefied grease which had created high levels of which poisonous gas? 
hydrogen sulfide. Yep. Which railway company's tunnels at Gower Street in London were found by Haldane to contain high concentrations of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in 1898? His report advocated additional ventilation. The Metropolitan Railway. Yep. Haldane was inspired to lobby Joseph Chamberlain for improvements to prisoners' rations as a result of a campaigner's report on the conditions she'd witnessed in the Boer War concentration camps. What was the campaigner's name? Emily Hobhouse. Yes. In 1901, Haldane was one of the founding editors of which periodical publication? Journal of Hygiene. Yep. In 1906, Haldane led a commission on deep sea diving and proved with a series of experimental dives that staged decompression would prevent the bends. The deepest of these dives was in which Scottish loch? Loch Ridden. Loch Sriven, or Streven. Haldane went to a lecture by a renowned scientist in Oxford in 1931 where many attendees left before the end. It led Haldane to remark, if their maths are good enough to follow in, their German certainly is not. Who was the scientist? Einstein. Yes. Haldane's 1922 book, Respiration, was based on lectures he delivered at Yale University in 1916 in which annual lecture series? The Silliman Lectures. Yep. During the First World War, Haldane went to the Western Front to investigate the use of a poison gas by the German army at Ypres. He invented a makeshift respirator that could be made from bottles filled with cotton and soil to alleviate the effects of the gas. Which gas was it? Chlorine. Chlorine is correct. George? You have no passes. You have also scored 10 points. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Sancha Legg. Your occupation? Financial advisor. And your chosen subject? Hancock's Half Hour. Ah, the great television comedy series starring Tony Hancock, broadcast back in the 50s and 60s. Here we go. In both his radio and television series, Tony Hancock lives in East Cheam at what address? 23 Railway Cuttings. Yes, Hancock's Half Hour was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson. They first met in 1948 at the Milford Sanatorium in Surrey and spent more than two years there being treated for what disease? TB. Yep. From series two onwards, episodes were largely made at the Riverside Studios in Hammersmith, but in the first series, five of the six live transmissions came from a studio in Shepherd's Bush. Which one? Lime Grove. Yep. In The Train Journey, Sid, played by Sid James, has arranged for Tony to star in a Shakespeare play as part of the Giggleswick Festival, which, according to Sid, is the cultural centre of the North. Which play? Henry V. Yep. Hancock invites Smudger Smith, Ginger Johnson and Chalky White to a 15th anniversary reunion party of members of the 3rd East Cheam Light Horse. What's his own nickname? Kipper's Hancock. Yep. In the third series, when Hancock had flu in real life, one episode was hastily repeated in place of the build one, the elocution teacher. What's the title of the repeated episode? Pass. In one of the best-known episodes, Hancock is told he must donate a pint of blood, to which he replies, I don't mind giving a reasonable amount, but a pint? That's very nearly an armful. He's soon pacified when the doctor tells him that he has the recess-positive form of which rare blood group? AB negative. Yes. What's the title of the opening episode of the seventh and last series entitled simply Hancock? It introduces Tony in his Earl's Court flat as he performs a monologue that the newspaper, the stage and television today describe as a resounding triumph. The bedsitter. Yeah. In The Missing Page, Hancock impresses a librarian when he asks for four volumes of classical literature, only to stand on them so he can reach a copy of a crime novel. What's the title of the novel? Lady, Don't Fall Backwards. Yep. The television series featured a repertory company of familiar faces and included an Australian actor who made 37 credited appearances, including as a bass player, a Viking and a matador. What was his name? John Vivian. Yep. In the 1957 Christmas special, Hancock's 43 Minutes, Tony Hancock produces an oversized musical instrument to play a duet with the jazz player Max Geldray. What instrument? Harmonica. Is correct. You had one pass, Sancho. Uh, that third series, when Hancock had flu in real life, the repeated episode was the Alpine holiday. But you too have ten points. <laughs> And our final contender, please. Thank you. And your name is? Anne McElhinney. Your occupation? I'm a retired primary school teacher. And your chosen subject? The novels of John Wyndham. 
a British writer who pioneered a form of science fiction he called logical fantasy. Two minutes of it. Here we go. In Wyndham's novel The Chrysalids, the inhabitants of Labrador believe an event that has wiped out the old world was sent by God. What name do they give to this event? Tribulation. Yep. In The Crack and Wakes, Mike Watson's a scriptwriter for a media company whose name others regularly confuse with the BBC. What's the name of the company? EBC. Yep. When Matthew begins talking to his invisible friend in Chalky, his parents are reminded of how their daughter Polly had an imaginary friend of her own as a young girl. What was the name of Polly's imaginary friend? Piff. Yep. The day of the Triffids begins on May the 8th, which William describes as feeling like a Sunday. What day of the week was May the 8th in reality? It was a Wednesday. It was. In The Midwich Cuckoos, Richard explains that Midwich hit the headlines in the 18th century when a highwayman was shot dead by sweet Polly Parker on the steps of the Scythe and Stone Inn. What was the nickname of the highwayman? Ned. No, Black Ned. Francis Saxover discovers the life-prolonging properties of lichenin in Trouble with Lichen. What word does he coin to describe any such drug that prevents aging? Um. Auntie Jerome. Yes. In the Crack and Wakes, Mike and Phyllis are on board a cruise ship celebrating their honeymoon when they observe a series of fireballs as they fall into the sea, an event that heralds the arrival of the invading aliens. What's the name of the cruise ship? Guinevere. Yep. In the opening scene of The Outward Urge, Air Marshal Sir Godfrey Wilde quotes the lines, For all the night I heard their thin, gnat voices cry, Star to faint star across the sky. Wilde correctly believes that the verse was written by which English poet? Um, uh, Oscar Wilde. Rupert Brooke. In the chrysalids, David finds a pony that's been killed by a cat-like mutant with long curved claws. What's the name of the character who'd owned the pony? Petra. Yes. In the day of the Triffids, Bill Mason and Coker discover that the community at Tensham is run along Christian lines. What's the name of the woman who is the principal organiser? Miss Durrant. Yep. In Trouble with Lichen, Diana sets up a beauty treatment company in London where she secretly administers the anti-aging lichenin to her clients. What's the name of the company? Nefertiti. Nefertiti is correct. No passes, and you have nine points. OK. Well, that's the end of the specialist round, a very close one too. Let's have a look at the scores in fourth place with nine points and tied for first place, ten points apiece, Dan, George and Sancha. So, now it is the general knowledge round and if there's a tie at the end of it, looks like there might very well be at this rate, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they are tied on passes as well, then there has to be a tie break. So, let us ask and to join us again, if you would, please. Right, Anne, uh, you start out with nine points, so there is nothing in it. Two and a half minutes of general knowledge questions coming up. Here we go. What do the letters LBW stand for in cricket? L, leg before wicket. Yep. Which fictional character is able to talk with animals and has been played on screen by Rex Harrison, Eddie Murphy and Robert Downey Jr.? Dr. Doolittle. Yep, the highest French order of merit was founded by Napoleon in May 1802 and is presented on behalf of the head of state. What's it called? The Légion d'honneur. Correct. Which 20th century artist pioneered the technique of dripping or pouring paint onto canvas? It earned him the nickname Jack the Dripper. Jackson Pollock. Yes. Which chemical element, a colourless, odourless gas at room temperature, has a name that comes from the Greek for hidden? It has the atomic number 36. Strontium. Krypton. Which actress rose to prominence as the barmaid Raquel in Coronation Street in the 1990s and went on to play lead roles in the television drama series Last Tango in Halifax and Happy Valley? Sarah Lancaster? No, Sarah Lancashire. Which title character from a Shakespeare play is known as the Moor of Venice? Um, Antonia? Othello. The term oh. Big Bang Theory for the concept often used to explain the origin of the universe was coined in the 1940s by a British astronomer who disagreed with it. What was his name? Fred Foyle? Hoyle. Yes, Hoyle, but I have to take your first answer, I'm afraid. Foyle. The American surgeon Joseph E. Murray shared the 1990 Nobel Prize in Medicine. In 1954, he'd performed the first successful human organ transplant. What organ was transplanted? Liver. Kidney. Which actress and singer is the subject of the musical play End of the Rainbow by Peter Quilter? It's set against the backdrop of a series of comeback concerts shortly before her death in 1969. Judy Garland? Yes. The first American space station was launched in 1973. It stayed in orbit for six years before it re-entered the atmosphere and scattered debris over Western Australia and the Indian Ocean. What was its name? 
Scala. Yep. In the Odyssey, Homer wrote about a group of people whose habitual consumption of a native plant resulted in a state of blissful apathy. What's the name of those people? Um, uh, utopians. Lotus Eaters. Which London hospital and its associated charity is known by the acronym GOSH, spelled G-O-S-H? Great Ormond Street Hospital. Yes. The Western Wall, commonly known as the Wailing Wall, is a landmark and pilgrimage site in which Middle Eastern city? Jerusalem. Yes. A major confectionery and chocolate company was founded in the early 20th century near Harrisburg in Pennsylvania. The locality, officially called Derry Township, is now usually known by the name of the company. What name? Herschel. Hershey. What song made famous by Nina Simone and later a hit for the band Muse comes from the 1964 musical The Roar of the Grease Paint, The Smell of the Crowd? Uh, I feel fine. Ah, uh, nearly. But I'm afraid the words are feeling good. Nonetheless, no passes, and You have scored a total now of 17 points. Thank you. And now Dan again, please. And, Dan, you start out with 10 points. 17, as you've just heard, is the score to beat. Two and a half minutes of general knowledge, Dan. Starting now, postcodes beginning with the letter CF cover addresses in and around a city in South Wales. Which city? Cardiff. Yep. Anthracite is a high-carbon form of what fossil fuel? A coal. Yep. The song Empire State of Mind reached number two in the UK singles chart in 2009 and went on to win two Grammy Awards. It was a collaboration between Jay-Z and which other singer? Alicia Keys. Yep. Which British aviation company built the first World War fighter planes, the Camel and the Pup? A Spitfire. Sopwith. A word for a moment of sudden realisation or understanding is also the name of a feast day observed in the Western Christian calendar on January the 6th. What word? Um. Revelation. Epiphany. The two sea straits called the Skagerrak and the Kattegat lie off the northern and eastern coasts of which European country? Denmark. Yes. In the 1940 animated feature film Fantasia, the sorcerer's apprentice was played by which Disney cartoon character? Mickey Mouse. Yep. In August 2019, the MSP for Edinburgh Central resigned as leader of the Scottish Conservatives, a post she'd held for just under eight years. What's her name? Ruth Davidson. Yep. What's the name of the viral disease that was introduced into the wild rabbit population in Australia and France in the 1950s to reduce their number? It also spread to the British rabbit population. Myxomatosis. Yep. What plural name derived from Latin words for two and eyes is given to a handheld optical device used to magnify distant objects? Binoculars. Correct. Which Russian poet and novelist wrote the 1840 work A Hero of Our Time? The book is said to have had a profound influence on writers such as Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. Pushkin. Lemontov. What mythical creature has the face of a human, the body of a lion or tiger, the tail of a dragon or scorpion and the quills of a porcupine? Griffin. Manticore. In 1926, a famous Catalan architect died after he was hit by a tram in Barcelona and was buried in the crypt of the Sagrada Familia. Which architect? Gaudi. Yep. Yeah. Which actor won a Golden Globe for his performance in the title role of the 2018 British television drama series Bodyguard? Um, Richard uh, Ashton. No, Madden. What name from the Greek for leavened is given to proteins such as trypsin and amylase, which speed up chemical reactions? Enzymes. Yes. An English town about 30 miles east of Cambridge is named after a former patron saint of England who was king of East Anglia till he was killed by Danish invaders around 869. Which town? Uh, St Edmunds. Very St Edmunds, St. Edmunds correct. The delicacy known as Beche de Mer, or Tripang, is made from the flesh of a marine creature commonly named for its resemblance to a long, thin fruit, often used as a salad ingredient. What is that common name? Uh, sea cucumber. Yes, indeed it is. No passes down. You now have a total of 22 points. And now George again, please. And George, you also start with 10, of course. The score to beat as we speak is 22. Here we go, two and a half minutes of general knowledge. Rwanda, Togo and Chad are countries in which continent? Africa. Yes, what is the term for the person who carries a golfer's clubs during a match? Caddy. Yep. The author born Erica Mitchell in London in 1963 has had a series of best-selling erotic romance novels published since 2011 under what pen name? 
E.L. James. Yep, the city of Constantinople, which had previously been the capital of both the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire, officially adopted a new name in 1930. What name? Istanbul. Yep. The writer and director of the 1991 film Boys in the Hood died in April 2019. What was his name? Pass. A cord or bandage that's wrapped tightly around a serious wound to stop heavy bleeding from an artery or vein is known by a name derived from French. What name? Tourniquet. Yep. Certain species of an Asian bird of the starling family are often kept as pets because of their ability to mimic human speech. What bird? Parrot. Minor bird. A television drama first broadcast in 2013, which returned for a second series four years later, subtitled China Girl, stars Elizabeth Moss as Detective Robin Griffin. What's the title of the series? Uh, the, f the Lakes. Top of the Lake. What animals are described as hungry in the name of a popular game in which players compete to catch marbles released into a bowl-shaped board? Hippos. Yeah. Which artist painted the Garden of Earthly Delights? He's believed to have been born around 1450 in the Duchy of Brabant, and his paintings often depict nightmarish scenes of demons and monsters. Bruegel. Bosch. Which Middle Eastern country joined the United Nations in 1971 and is the only member with a name in English that begins with the letter Q? Qatar. Yep. Yeah. Which American singer first found fame in the 1950s with the gospel group The Soul Stirrers? Two of his best-known pop hits are You Send Me and Twist in the Night Away. Elvis. Sam Cooke. Helmut Kohl became Chancellor of West Germany in 1982. His predecessor in the role was also called Helmut. What was his surname? Schroeder. Schmidt. The songs Some Enchanted Evening and Younger Than Springtime originated in a Broadway musical first staged in 1949. What musical? Kiss me, Kate. South Pacific. What name is given to the random movement of particles suspended in a fluid? It's derived from the surname of the Scottish botanist who first described it in the 1820s. Brownian motion. Yes. And we are out of time, and you had one pass. The writer and director of that film, Boys in the Hood, was John Singleton. You have scored a total, George, of 18 points. <laughs> And finally, Sancha again, please. And you again start with ten points, Sancha, but the score to beat is still, if you are to get through to the next round, 22. So, here we go. What adjective is used to describe fluids that are administered to a patient directly into a vein rather than swallowed, often by means of a drip? The word is sometimes abbreviated to the letters IV. Intravenous. Yep. Which veteran BBC commentator who was a member of the Ryder Cup team eight times became known as the voice of golf? Peter Ellis. Yep. An American actress who was married to Robert Wagner twice received the first of her three Oscar nominations for her role as a troubled teenager in the 1955 film Rebel Without a Cause. What was her name? Catherine Hepburn. Natalie Wood. The Mistral is a cold, dry wind of southern France which blows through the valley of a major river. Which river? Loire. The Rhone. What's the term for the long rear part of a formal dress, especially a wedding dress, that trails along the ground behind the person wearing it? Its various styles include the sweep, the chapel and the cathedral. Trail. Train. Which monarch briefly reigned as King of the United Kingdom from January 20th to December 11th, 1936, although he was never formally crowned? Edward VIII. Yeah. In January 2020, which actress became the first black person to play the Doctor in Doctor Who? Pass. The regulatory body known in full as the Office of Gas and Electricity Markets is more commonly known by what acronym? Ofgen? Yep. Which stock character of the Italian Commedia dell'arte is referenced in the lyrics of Queen's 1975 hit single, Bohemian Rhapsody? Raffaello? Scaramouche. A former Secretary General of the United Nations went on to serve as President of Austria from 1986 until 1992. What was his name? Smith. Good fun time. A 1966 film based on a book by Joy Adamson tells the story of a naturalist's attempts to return a tame lioness called Elsa to the wild. What film? Lion. Born free. The binary system is said to have a base of two because the numbers are represented by two different digits. Correspondingly, the decimal system has a base of how many? 
Five. Ten. Which French science fiction writer born in Nantes in 1828 wrote more than 50 novels in a series entitled Voyage Extraordinaire? Pass. Slender and slow are the two types of a tailless nocturnal primate native to South and Southeast Asia. What primate? Sloth. The loris. We're out of time and you had two passes. That um, French science fiction writer, you'll be cross with yourself about this, was Jules Verne. Yeah. And the actress who became the first black person to play the Doctor in Doctor Who was Joe Martin. You have a total censure of 14 points. <laughs> so, a close contest, a clear winner. Let's have a look at the final scores. In fourth place, with 14 points, Sancha. Third place, 17 points. Anne, second place, 18 points. George, first place with 22 points. Dan. Which means, of course, the Dan goes through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. And if you would like to be a contender in the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Masterminds, and thanks for watching. Goodbye. I applied for Mastermind because it's a programme I've always wanted to be on. Um, I first remember watching it when I was seven years old, when Fred Housego, the taxi driver, won it in 1980. So I've been a fan of the show for the best part of 40 years, and it's yeah, high time that uh, I applied and came on it myself. Well, I chose London 2012 Olympics because I'm a big sports fan. I remember watching a lot of the Olympics um, when it happened, so it was no great trouble to go back and revise it. In the archery events, the women's team competition was won for the seventh successive time by which country? South Korea. Yep. I was also on a sports special series of Mastermind 12 years ago. It was just a one-off, um, so it was a great opportunity to get back in the black chair. All four of us were separated by a single point, so it came down, obviously, to general knowledge, and I was just hoping my general knowledge would be good enough and the questions would fall for me, so uh, luckily that was the case. What name from the Greek for leavened is given to proteins such as trypsin and amylase, which speed up chemical reactions? Enzymes. Yes. Really pleased to win the episode. Looking forward to the next round, but clearly the competition's just going to get tougher from here. It would be a real privilege to win Mastermind, and I guess that, like in sport, um, to be successful in any competition, you've got to put the preparation in and hope it goes well on the day. <laughs>